Time, I think, for another wander through some of the latest news items that have been clogging up my press releases inbox. Everything from significant sales numbers to limited edition specials that are probably not really that limited. Yeah, it's a bit snarky, isn't it? And I haven't even started yet. Probably just best to wind my neck in again and rather begin with something that we can all appreciate and feel some warm, fuzzy feelings for. There was something, he says, frantically trying to think of what it was, and it's, yes, it's KTM. Actually, there's a lot of orange news I want to mention this week. Not all of it absolutely bang up to the minute, but I've run out of time in previous reports to mention the orange Austrian. So let us first consider the milestone of a million KTM bikes being built. Yes, that is a big number and deservedly celebrated. More big numbers are sure to follow since it seems that KTM is still accelerating hard. The second 500,000 bikes were produced in half the time it took to make the first half million. Fittingly, since Bajaj owns 49.9% of the Pira Group, the controlling body that owns KTM, the one millionth bike was made in Bajaj's Chakan plant and Equally appropriately, given KTM's off-road record, it was an adventure model, uh, the 390 Adventure to be specific. Let's move on to some other rumours that we hope are a, a little more solid. Both of these proposed models I very much hope will come to fruition and soon. The first is a bike that will give KTM a contender in a class that shifts big numbers and produces healthy profit margins for the current contenders that are Yamaha's Tracer 9 and BMW's F900XR. These are your road adventure style sport tourers and they make great do-it-all machines. The Yamaha has led the way for some time now and BMW was the first to have a real go at offering something of a direct competitor with the F900XR. Although if you take out the modest off-road pretensions of Ducati's Multistrada V2 and throw in Triumph's more road-oriented 900 GT, the one with the mag wheels, then you have a couple of other serious propositions for your money. However, unless you wanted to use the 890 Adventure with its most road-oriented tyre option, the Austrian manufacturer didn't really have any skin in the game at all and that's why the rumoured impending arrival of an 890 SMT makes perfect sense. I love the 890 Duke R. I even really like the standard 890 Duke, though to be fair, I'd rather have, and in fact do have, the more affordable, slightly more entertaining Yamaha MT-09 in that particular non-R, non-SP head-to-head. However, in this tall roader sport touring guise, horsepower and yobbability aren't as important and so the proposed SMT with the standard 890 Duke components would do very nicely indeed. I do hope that it's based on the standard Duke's engine power at a 115 horsepower or thereabouts and not the adventure bikes that is nearer to 105 horsepower I think it is. 105 horsepower is the same as the F900XR and it's nice sensible, ample in that, but KTM doesn't do those words. And the Yamaha makes 117 horsepower after all. So yeah, it had better be the 115 horsepower version of the parallel twin that's in the Duke, and then they should have a, a pretty popular model on their hands. Um, racking my brains now. Oh yes, moving on. 990 is a significant number in KTM land. The 990 Adventure is something of an icon in the manufacturer's adventure model history. I know plenty of KTM adventure riders who hanker after that original 990, wish they hadn't sold theirs or, or they hope for another one to appear in their lives. It seems the 890 hasn't scratched that itch for them. Actually, there's an Austrian chap that I occasionally meet at the factory when I'm picking up test bikes in Matikhoven. He's obviously ridden everything in the range. He's not poor and he would undoubtedly get some staff discount as well and yet you know what he rides? Yeah, an original 990 Adventure with no electronic aids. 
Okay, he's a bit of a riding god, but it, it just goes to show you how right that bike was straight out of the box. And as a road rider, I have to say that the 990 designation is equally important to me because of the Super Duke 990 of 2005. They only made it for about five or six years until shortly before the 1290 came along, but that's one bike that really got to me when I was still barely in my 30s and still riding like a lunatic and loved endless wheelies and rear wheel skidding and crap, backing it in antics and, well, generally behaving badly. What a bike! Sweet handling, easy to ride aggressively, still relatively practical and comfortable and it's V-twin made 120 horsepower. To be brutally honest, in a road bike I think that's probably more than enough. For me it sits at the upper end of that sweet range where there's enough power to scare yourself silly with speed and acceleration but not so much as to make it completely irrelevantly ballistic. Don't get me wrong though, I want the manufacturers to keep on offering us 200 horsepower superbikes and sporting nakeds, but for me, 120 horsepower, maybe 130 horsepower, the R version of the 990, by the way, had 132 horsepower. That amount is pretty much where I reckon the ideal level is for enjoying a sport bike without relying on or, or rather leaning too heavily on a raft of electronics to keep you out of the hedges. Anyway, having performed my usual waffling, <laughs> reminiscing digression, what I'm trying to get around to saying is that it seems that there is a new 990 Duke on the horizon. It will probably have a power output in the 130 to 135 horsepower range, and it will possibly replace the 890. Although you never know with KTM, given that the 790 has just reappeared, although it does make more sense to ultimately have a 790 and a 990 in the range, which, thinking about it, might mean that the 890 SMT is also going to be a 990, or not. Who knows? This is why they're called rumours after all. Personally, I hope they make them both soon and that they're both 990s. And in a very roundabout way, that brings me to Brabus. Yes, the makers of outrageous performance cars, based on Mercedes and smart cars mostly, I think. I have, I have to admit, taken the mick a little bit in earlier news reports about the first ever Brabus bike that was launched about this time last year. But to be fair, as a youth who was obsessed with fast cars, I really enjoyed what Brabus did. Take an already hugely rapid Mercedes and along with a, a load of extra bling, throw some serious additional horses under the bonnet and make a, an epic, insanely fast hypercar. However, when they launched the Brabus 1300R last year, this was a gently restyled KTM 1290 Super Duke R Evo that had absolutely no extra performance in that already legendary 180 horsepower V-twin. Sure, there was a new headlight treatment and seat and all the best bits out of the KTM Performance Parts catalogue and some fetching wheels and they made 77 red and 77 black and it was so limited and desirable that it took less than two minutes, I think it was, to sell the whole batch out online. Much of that success surely had something to do with a South African in charge of marketing it and building awareness around the launch and of course a load of existing Brabus owners who fancied a matching bike to go with their car with what, for them, probably amounted to nothing more than a, a bit of pocket change. Having been a bit of a peasant and questioned the sanity of anyone who had bought into the hype, <laughs> I was reminded by several commenters that uh, I was obviously too poor to understand. They were buying the bike as an investment apparently and since they had the money they could spend it as they wished. They were of course absolutely right on all counts but that still doesn't prevent me from having an opinion and that is that you've got too much money, too little taste and buying the Super Duke R Evo and using the rest of the money to spend elsewhere still seems like much the better option to me. Well, 
Now, many more Brabus fanboys have had the opportunity to make a similar investment this year. Another limited edition Brabus 1300R became available for online pre-orders on February the 16th. Although this time in not quite so limited numbers since there are 145 of each colour. Stealth grey and super black in this case. It seems to me that this is effectively exactly the same bike as last year except with some different colours. Look hard enough and there are some other minuscule styling changes but make no mistake this is the same bike that was available last year and at about 850,000 rand or 42 and a half thousand euros it is still more than double the price of the orange bike that it effectively remains beneath the skin. As I talk to you about this the orders have been live for two days you put your name on KTM's list and make a two and a half thousand euro down payment and then I presume when enough orders have come in your local KTM dealer will tell you whether you've been successful or not in your application. I have no doubt that they will sell the lot of them once again. 290 still isn't a big number after all but something tells me that the sale possibly wasn't as lightning fast as before because otherwise I'm sure I'd have noticed a gloating press release by now. There again it's Saturday as I film this I'll probably get an email on Monday saying it took a thousandth of a second to fill the order book and I will not unusually <laughs> be completely wrong again. Two points in the meantime though the first of which is I'd like to know what those original purchasers and those that commented on my mic taking report in particular now think of the value of their original investment given that the limited numbers now aren't quite so limited and secondly Brabus need to catch a bit of a wake up I reckon and stop with the bling trinkets and start earning their motorcycling stripes by doing something properly Brabus and outrageous this second model needs some engineering excess how about a turbo or supercharger incorporated into that amazing engine then it will be a proper Brabus, not just a KTM with some jewellery. Anyway, on that slightly snarky note, I shall bring this news report to a close. Time for an ad break. Anyway, on that snarky note, <laughs> I shall bring this report to a close. See you in the next one, I hope. Oh, and if you like these news pieces, even a little help us in our struggle against our algorithmic overlord, please, and chuck us a thumbs up or or maybe even subscribe. Thanks and cheers for now.